Hi, welcome to a2zknowledge.com and to my channel Data Engineering. And today we are going to discuss about how to calculate Spark memory properties. So in Spark, after you develop your program, you have to create the jar file and then by using Spark submit command, we have to submit the jar file in yawn cluster mode. Right. So during that time, we used to pass few memory properties like driver memory, executor memory, number of cores and number of executors. And we do have some calculation to calculate that because many of the people have the confusion of like what numbers I have to give for those memory properties. And it's not like uh, I can give 10 GB, 20 GB or even 5 GB. It's not like that. We can't go some something like that in very dynamic way because there is some calculations we have to do. So when we run Spark job, there is some monitoring tools like Spark Lens, uh, which will be like uh, integrated with your code. So what Spark Lens will do, right? It will inform to the admin or the people who are manages the cluster that this particular program supposed to use 5 GB, but instead it is using 10 GB memory. So that means you are you are locking extra 10 GB memory in your code. So the resource has been locked. So that is a the problem. Then the administrators will uh, raise a question to the developer. Why you are using extra 5 GB RAM? So by the time I cannot say like I'm not sure like I don't know how to specify. So for solving this problem, there is a calculation. You can use it. It will be like not a 100% accurate one, but still it will be uh, more or less. Uh, it will be there. So it's always good to do that. So uh, let's get into the topic. And in Spark, there is an option called DRA, DRA, Dynamic Resource Allocation, where Spark will take care of allocating the memory on its own. But that is not highly recommended for real time use cases and heavy volume of data. OK, so don't go with DRA where Spark itself will take care of all the memory properties. Please don't go for it. So now there is a scenario we can go for it. We have six nodes, OK, six nodes and each node have 15 cores and then 64 GB of RAM. I'm G I'm saying this calculation for real time only. It's not for our personal uh, uh, example or personal laptop. In personal laptop, you have a Spark cluster and you are, you are running your program with test data. So it's not for that. It's for the real time. Okay, so now course. So what is course? The number of concurrent tasks that can be executed in a each node. So here uh, I'm having total 15 cores. So, so as a decent count, I go with five. Okay, so that means at the time five, uh, the particular task assigned to a particular node where the data exists at the when the task got assigned. So uh, at the time five parallel task can be get triggered. Okay, so I'm going with five. You can ask me how you decided this five. So the five is something I'm deciding based on the total number of cores. I'm just dividing it to three or two, something like that. Okay, I go with five. Now equal, equal number of, I'm, I'm just doing some divides. Okay, now it is five. For example, we have given five parallel tasks for each executor. So when in your slave node, executor will be get created first and then your tasks will be created. The task is what? And as an executor, how many parallel tasks I can launch? So that is what this course is all about. An executor can launch five cores in parallel. So now the question is, so how many executors I can have? Okay, that is the next question. So number of core is five and number of executor is 15 is total number of cores divided by five is number of cores that you have decided. So total three executors can be launched in a node. So if you see here, you have node one in node one, you have three executors and each of this executor have five tasks. It can have five parallel tasks at a time. Now imagine only two tasks is required by executor one, then it will launch only two. If it is three, then parallel it will launch three. Now the executor one requires 10 tasks, then that means for the executor one will first trigger five parallel tasks. Once that is completed, it will trigger the next five. It will be in that way. Okay. So 100% parallelism within a node is not that much easy to achieve. Okay. If you go for any parallelism technology, we call MPP, right? Massive parallel processing technology, Strom, Spark, MapReduce. It's not that much possible to always achieve 100% parallelism. Okay, so between node is parallelism similar to that even in a single node the tasks should run in parallel. <coughs> Sorry. Now executor per node. Okay, three. Now the next thing is how much memory uh, an executor can have. This is a very important thing. So total is 64 GB divided by three executor per node. So that means you will be getting around 21 GB of RAM. Sorry again. So 21 GB of RAM is something you can allocate for the particular Spark job. Now you are deploying this in Yawn, right? So Yawn should have some memory to 
deploy your job in the cluster so yarn need some memory so it is recommended to give one or two gb for your yarn okay there is a property that you have to set it in spark submit while triggering the command so there you can give one or two gb so that means 18 gb you can give for your spark job and keep in mind that this last line as a disclaimer i'm telling you the 18 gb what you get as an output is, is imagine that as a max memory that you can have for the job so starts from minimum 5 to 18 decide between uh, uh, you have to decide one number between this 5 to 18 so that is something you have to take care so uh, we always used to go in a decent i i, I can recommend you to 5 to 10 or 5 to 15 GB is okay, not more than that because 18 is max you can give and 5 is a decent is always minimum you can go with it. And driver memory is similar to your uh, executor memory, whatever you give for executor memory, you can give the same for your driver memory. 8 GB. So there is no special calculation for driver memory and all. Driver, <coughs> driver is like a um, main method uh, and which will trigger the spark context, right? Yep. So this is what the exact formula. So based on this, you can tr you can trigger a job, and then when you check for more, some monitoring tool like Spark Lens, it will be somewhat accurate. Yep. So thanks for watching a2zknowledge.com and my channel Data Engineering, and that's all about the topic is over. And we do a lot of tech videos in English and Tamil, and I have a lot of Spark videos, and the playlist has been shared in the description box. My Instagram and LinkedIn URL is also shared in the description box. If you want to contact me, you can do that. And we do have a lot of other tech videos as well. Just enjoy those videos. And I have one more channel called Startup Idea, and I have given that link in the description box. If you are interested, you can look into that. Thanks for watching.